All right. Well, thank you for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the group. Um, I'm not sure our presentation is quite as exciting as John's, but we'll do our best here. Um, actually had the opportunity a few months ago to go tour um, the TMC up at Roseville and to meet John. So it's cool to, to see his presentation. So today, Sinclair and I, uh, we're just going to be doing a quick overview about um, Tim in Iowa and then some strategies for quicker um, incident detection in Iowa. Uh, just a brief overview about our statewide traffic management center or TMC. It is located in Ankeny in central Iowa. It's in the basement of the motor vehicle building. Um, it is uh, staffed 24 hours a day, every day of the year. So no matter what time of day or you know holidays, if you call, somebody will be there. Uh, unlike Minnesota, it is contracted out. So the DOT owns the TMC, but um, they have their own program manager, and then all the operators are contracted out. So we actually have a new company coming in October, or excuse me, August 1st, AECOM will be the new contractor. So we will um, get to work with them and, and partner with them very, very soon. And then lastly, our um, safety service patrol, it's um, in Iowa, we call it the highway helper. They um, are dispatched out of the TMC. So um, we coordinate with them either on the phone or with uh, chat sessions, we're able to coordinate with Highway Helper as well. So just transitioning to some of the tools, uh, the TMC, um, we have our dynamic message signs. When someone asks me what I do at the DOT, it's, it's really hard to summarize. So I always tell them about the message boards because people always know what the message boards are. Um, there's We have several of those throughout the state. And then we have um, about 500 cameras also throughout the state. I didn't mention before, it is a statewide TMC. So we cover every portion of the state. It's not just um, the urban areas. We do also have the rural ones. Um, granted, we might not have cameras there, but we do. Um, we still serve those areas as well. And then you can see on the bottom there, our video wall that was taken recently down in the TMC. So the operators can do a tour of the cameras, you know, kind of flip through them, or if there's an incident, then um, they can keep that uh, camera stationary in order to monitor it. We have 511, which is um, Sinclair is the expert on that, that we um, utilize as far as ways, which Sinclair will, go into a little bit further here. And then the social media interaction. We have, we work very closely with the Strategic Communications Bureau. So um, they do Facebook and then they do Twitter as well. And then actually in the off hours overnight, um, the TMC operator will monitor um, the social media on, on their behalf as well. And then we also have our um, traffic incident management or TIM plans. And right now, all of those uh, TIM plans are going under re of review. So someone is making sure that they are accurate and that they're up to date. And of course, we're finding, you know, it's construction season. So um, we co constantly have to, to monitor, monitor those and make sure that they're correct. Because if you throw a construction into an area that has a TIM plan, then it'll need to be adjusted. So those are a few of the tools that we utilize. Yeah, and so some of the um, more specific incident detection tools that we use um, in the TMC regarding kind of data, um, NRIX, which I think a lot of um, states probably have, uh, and you can see a picture at the right showing, um, you know, a slowdown. Um, and we do we do have traffic in Iowa occasionally, <laughs> um, contrary to maybe what some people think. But um, anyway, so we have that integrated into our ATMS, so the TMC is able to easily see, you know, backups or um, crashes, things that are closing um, lanes or or queuing traffic. Um, we also have that data integrated into a dashboard uh, that is on both sides. You may have seen that in the picture that Ashley showed earlier. Um, it was on each side of the video wall and that easily shows the bottlenecks also that we're seeing um, and how long uh, they've been up there and active and location and all that stuff. So it's kind of a at a glance look. Um, Waze, which is kind of a big deal and I'll go into that more, but how we've, um, 
integrated that in for incident detection. Um, we've been a partner of the Ways for Cities uh, program since the beginning, back in, I think it was 2014. And we started out um, just kind of like the easiest way was to get it integrated to do um, email notifications. We filtered the data and then um, now to being integrated into our ATMS. Uh, and then traffic sensors, um, you know, everybody's got those. Uh, we're using those for queue detection um, that automatically posts in our, mainly in our work zones that automatically post um, slow or stop traffic messages to our DMS and portables in the area for that work zone. And then cameras, as um, Ashley mentioned previously, that we have about five, 500 cameras or so statewide. And um, those are a manual thing that as far as uh, incident de detection, but um, it's also good for uh, verification. And then something that we recently added was um, getting access to our state patrol CAD uh, system and that's coming in through again um, we have like a ops dashboard um, that the TMC uses that was uh, homemade uh, by a great programmer in our office and um, but that's that's being filtered um, you know of course no PII all that stuff so um, and then those are uh, verified once they've been verified then they're added into the ATMS. And then as far as um, sharing cameras, I, I don't know how common, uh, I'm assuming a lot of uh, agencies, DOTs share their cameras with law enforcement or um, other state agencies that would be interested. Um, we have, we share through our ATMS, this is a screenshot showing kind of our um, camera interface within OpenTMS is our ATMS. Um, but we share with law enforcement, cities, counties, EMAs, our um, contractors um, for like our intelligent work zones or our ITS maintenance contractors, um, Federal Highway and the National Weather Service. Um, so they all get access to OpenTMS. We can filter out all the permissions and stuff to basically only give them to the cam give them access to the cameras. And then some have PTZ um, control and others we don't allow that, but most of like law enforcement and stuff does have uh, access. Um, in our previous system, the media also had, because there was a way to basically kind of have just a camera site, um, the media had access to that um, to have a little better quality than the public um, for uh, video. And we, with the change in our vendors about a year and a half ago, um, that changed. And so we kind of gave them a special site that um, allows them to be able to better have share the, the video um, on their, like on TV, I guess. So, um, and also something that I know is not common for a lot of DOTs, but we record all of our cameras. Um, most of them are using Genetech and then the ones that are on, um, like in our rural areas that are on cell modems, uh, those record to SD cards, and then we can access them uh, with, uh, we use Access Camera Companion to pull any of video from that. Um, and we make that available to anyone for free. Uh, and that's to public, law enforcement, um, attorneys, whoever, you know, anybody can um, get access to it. Um, and then we use that for after actions and training and, and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but we have an online request form and we're bit by bit, we're slowly um, automating uh, each of the steps. Uh, we've, we've done pretty well, but um, we're actually actively working on that right now. So uh, if you want, when we get slides out, you can click on those links and kind of see what we have. Back to you, Ashley. I think we're running a little bit short on time, so I'm going to skip this slide actually, and I'm going to let you. So people, oh, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to go over on my time, so. Um, no, that's all right. That's all right. If you go over a little bit, that's all right. So. Okay. We're not, we're not I can't see the time. the chat, so. Um, just this one talking about the um, collaborative communication. Um, as you heard, you know, I was a police officer for a long time, so it's been really important to me to make sure that we, um, that I leverage those connections. And so I worked really hard, you know, um, with the dispatch centers because they play a huge role 
um, in, in what the TMC does. So trying to do a lot of outreach there. The mock chat um, that actually was developed um, by somebody at the at the DOT. And so it, it has, serves many, many functions. But one thing is that the, uh, the dispatch centers um, the state radios can communicate directly with the TMC and so they can open up the chat session and it saves them from having to pick up the phone um, and it's much more efficient. Um, and then, yeah, the situational awareness between the DOT personnel and then law enforcement, again, um, leveraging those connections. Um, and then the after action reviews, we do those pretty much on an as needed basis. For example, I had one yesterday um that was just myself and dot about an incident that happened on i-35 but then next week i have one where there's going to be tow companies um the law enforcement is there dot myself and so we get those key players involved and um again go over that after action what went well what didn't go well and then we kind of lay out you know um what would be the next steps so that we can um improve for next time and then again, the real time um, applications here, we have the 511, the website and the app. Um, I've already confessed to Sinclair before I got this position. I did not have 511. Um, I do now and I promote it to anyone that will listen to me because it is great. Um, I highly recommend it. And then again, the social media, I talked about that earlier. And then um, search, circling back to Waze, which um, Sinclair will go into next. So as I mentioned before, we've been a partner with the um, Ways for Cities uh, from the beginning. And um, we started out with just doing the email notifications into the TMC, but if you've ever looked at a TMC inbox, you know they get a bazillion emails. And so, um, you know, we tried to get off that as soon as we could uh, to a way that was better integrated into their workflow. So we, um, added it into their dashboard um, that we use. And that's, like I said, kind of it's homegrown from one of our programmers um, in our office. And uh, I know there are small screenshots, but <laughs> maybe when you get the slides, you can look at it a little closer. But um, on the left is uh, showing the dashboard and you can see those are our incidents that come in. That's also, so there's a little um, ways icon uh, on the left side it's blue uh, in that kind of table. And then there's also one that looks like a law enforcement badge and that's coming in from the CAD system. And so then if they, if the operators um, click on those and also just to, those are filtered um, events. So we're not getting, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of off the top of my head. We're, they're, they're filtered to things that we can take action on easily. Um, so, a lot of those in there were stalled vehicles um, that we uh, have highway helpers uh, able to go and, and investigate or um, you know look at, uh, and then also there is one in there that was a crash. So um, anyway, so this is showing that, and then if they click on um, that event in that row, then it brings up the screenshot on the right, um, and then we're we're really close. We launched the integration um, into the ATMS which would make it much easier because it's all in one system and then you know can create an event from the ways events. But um, we ran into a, a bug and are working through that right now. So uh, anyway, so that, that's coming really soon. And then um, I just thought this was a, a good thing to show. It showed, this is just from the last, um, I think the last year basically, um, but it was, it's showing the, um, at least the one on the top is the last year, but it shows the amount of incidents that we are seeing that are being initially detected from the Waze events. And this is exactly the reason that I wanted to get involved with the um, Waze for Cities program, because we have a lot of areas, um, like in the rural areas and things like that, that we um, just, you know, we don't have sensors, we don't have cameras, um, any of those types of things. and and I just, you know, this was one way that we could easy, more easily um, get information about uh, incidents that are happening on our roads. So uh, this shows, for example, um, it's like, basically it's been around 20 to 30% um, for quite a while, last few years, um, our 
that percentage is the initial notification um, of an incidents that we're getting um, in the TMC. So it's pretty impressive, I think. And um, also, I mean, just a, a great tool for um, notifying operators. Another thing I wanted to show was it's not just, um, you know, ways is not just thing um, events that humans are, are notifying, you know, the crowdsourced stuff. Um, I guess this is considered crowdsourced, but it also does, Waze also does um, passive event creation. So meaning if you have the, if you have the app open and it, it's, cr you know, creating or um, collecting data, speed data, things like that, where you are, um, that if it notices like several Wazers and I don't know the algorithms, they won't share all that, <laughs> but, um, you know, if they are seeing slowdowns from several uh, vehicles, um, it will start creating this jam. Uh, and that actually goes out to 511 and, um, but also into the TMC on that dashboard that I showed. But I just thought this was an incident I happened to collect or find that um, it just shows to, you know, more verification, you know, the Google traffic layers line up um, almost exactly with the, the Waze jam. So just kind of another validation for that. Okay, and transitioning a little bit into um, the TIM program, right now uh, we started back up doing the TIM newsletter. That's um, our TIM coordinator at the DOT and our bureau. She worked to develop this and it's going to be sent out quarterly and it does go out to um, a, a large audience, it includes first responders, DOT, the towing companies, um, really anybody that wants it. And it does give an update about the types of training, that um, you know the Tim update for the the trainings that have gone on. Um, there's some after action review on there. It highlights some upcoming um, trainings, and then that's actually what we do at the quarterly meeting as well. Um, the next bullet point. So we just had our quarterly Tim meeting last week, and we do offer in person and virtual, so that way we can get a larger crowd. But we go over um, somebody from the Fire Training Service Bureau gives an update on the most recent, you know, the numbers, pretty much how this webinar started, the numbers, how many people have been trained, breaks it down, you know, fire, police, um, we go over that. And then some trends that we're seeing, um, somebody from Iowa State University comes in and, and talks about um, the quick clearance times, whether, you know, that is increased or decreased, uh, secondary crashes, um, and then they lay that out on a hotspot map so that we can, you know, work with law enforcement. Can we target those areas for enforcement where we're having these secondary crashes or repeat crashes and, and try and come up with a game plan there. So that's um, what we do at those quarterly meetings. And then, then that uh, we can transition into, we are actually having a TIM conference. Uh, I'm on the planning committee if you do have any questions about that, but it will be September 21st in Ames. And again, we're inviting, you know, anybody who wants to come, um, who, who wants to learn more about Tim, it is free to attend and um, we are still finalizing the agenda, but I can say for certain that you will learn about the traffic management center and highway helper because I am speaking on those. So, um, and then we drones, those, you know, it seems to be really a hot topic. Um, the Iowa State Patrol, they utilize drones, their troopers do, their um, technical investigators for scene, for scene management. Um, they go out and do all sorts of measurements. And so, um, the DOT actually, we're looking at implementing that in the Highway Helper. To, we're getting two pilots um, in the Highway Helper program, so they can uh, fly drones as well. So we'll be talking about that. And then we thought it'd be beneficial to hear from the towers. Um, so we're having a Q&A panel with them about what they're seeing um, out on the roadway from their perspective. And then uh, we're gonna be doing a um, large scale after action review that we can highlight um, about a major incident and walk through what um, it's done in one of those. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And then lastly, just play this very short video. This is from um, our highway helper. Um, 
And you can see there, I just, we wanted to highlight this to drive home, you know, this is why Tim is so important, you know, the quick clearance, keeping our roadways safe and getting people um, where they need to be um, safely and efficiently. I think that's the ultimate goal, right? That we learned safe and efficient. Those, those were the words that came up. So um, I think, you know, this, again, this video just drives home that that's what we're all here to do and the purpose of Tim, so. That I think, and then here's our contact information. But again, this will get sent out, so please reach out to Sinclair or myself if you have any questions.